All right, let's get started. So on the agenda today is a department update, um, a couple highlights of the financial review, an overview of the internal controls project, uh, the interest allocation model, and then a preview of the second quarter uh, budget committee work session. So for the accounting manager updates, we had our audit at the end of August. Uh, they came on site to collect boxes. I provide all of the financial statements. They spend a couple of days going over that and then last off with a million questions. This was the best year that we've had. Um, we had no journal entries, no findings, other than the lack of segregation of duty. So that was a huge win. And I owe a huge thank you to um, Nancy, the, the uh, court clerk, Lori Miller, the water utility clerk, and Chris Bird, um, the development, or sorry, short-term rental manager. Um, next one, I just started the government finance officer uh, training. So it's a two-year program with seven exams. It's very labor intensive, but super grateful for the opportunity. Um, it directly relates to everything that I'm doing. So I'm really um, looking forward to getting started on that. Um, this is our second quarter of taking express bill pay, uh, short-term rental quarterly returns. It's going really smoothly. It eliminates the need for Chris to have to enter that information into Cassell which is huge uh, time saving for us. And a huge thank you to Chris for helping me get that implemented and get our short-term rental owners on board. It was a, a big lift, but um, we've got almost all of them doing it through Express Bill Pay. So that's huge for us. Um, then I'll move on to the financial uh, overview. So um, this is all based off the report that I sent you guys last week just a graph so you can kind of see um, how everything pans out. Room tax collections is 59% of our total um, revenue from collections. <clears throat> and I'll go over that on the next slide because I know there was some questions about that. So revenue from collections includes all of these uh, items. So franchise fees, the short-term rental licenses, room tax, business license, and then all of our planning and inspection and tech fees. Um, the short-term rental licenses is high. We receive our renewals for the year in July. So that represents most of what we'll get for the year. But of course, um, any new, uh, new short-term rental will pay. So we do get a trickle in of that throughout the year. Business license is at 0%, which we're at about $1,900. Uh, renewals for that will go out in December and those will be due in January. And then, of course, franchise fees. Uh, in the general fund, we collect franchise fees from RTI, Recology, and Charter. Do you have Nina, any questions on that? Nina, is it is there any chance you could make that screen larger? Oh, let's see. Oh, that, that, oh, beautiful. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah, nice. Okay. <clears throat> um, so then to kind of hone in on the short-term rental, or sorry, transient lodging tax revenue. I had some questions um, because it seems low for our highest earning months of July, August, September. Um, so because we're a cash basis of accounting, uh, we don't recognize revenue when it's billed, we recognize it when it's received. So we track quarterly short-term rental revenue by calendar year, but for my purposes and the purposes of these reports and like what the audit reflects, um, it goes based on this. So in the first quarter of our fiscal year, we are receiving revenue from the second quarter of the calendar year, which is April, May, June. So I put a little breakdown just so folks can kind of see what that looks like. This was our revenue for uh, fiscal year 23-24. And so we're actually only down about $5,000 from this time last year. Do you have any questions on that? Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Can you go back? Yeah. So is it okay? Let me catch on here. 
So it, it is um, a quarter to quarter basis. Yeah. Uh, first, okay. What does a FY mean? Full year? Sorry, fiscal year. A fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just the first quarter. Yes. Okay. So in October, we're going to receive the third quarter of the calendar year's uh, transient lodging tax revenue. It gets kind of confusing. So, it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around that too, but because our fiscal year starts in July, but we don't collect the revenue for July until October. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just kind of the boring stuff, uh, revenue from other agencies, which is our IGA, um, this 76% mm -hmm. that just reflects uh, the revenue from the Oregon State Parks. We don't bill Wheeler and Halem until a little further down in the year. Um, the economy excise tax, that's based on construction in the city, uh, liquor tax, cigarette tax, and then state revenue sharing. Um, How much and then, was that total? What was the total for that? Oh, let me see. I did not. Hang on. The total for um, for this quarter revenue from other agencies. Yeah, <clears throat> thirty-seven thousand. Okay. So this fiscal year, first quarter, you're talking about July, August, and September. Correct. Okay. Except for TLT. Except for TLT, which is based on calendar year. And we don't receive that revenue until uh, October for those highest earning months. Okay, um, your budget is, okay, it's a little down from the budget if you pick the quarter. Okay, so I consider it on target. It's just a first quarter. Okay. For revenue from other agencies? Uh, like, yes. Yes. Yeah, and again, that's because, well, the state revenue sharing comes in quarterly, so we we haven't received, you know, a lot of what we'll get there. <clears throat> Liquor and cigarette is monthly, and then with the police and or the IGA for police services, again, we don't bill for Wheeler and Nahalem Tell a little later in the year. Any other questions on that? I generally pull the previous year's reports on first quarter, second quarter as we go through. I did not do that for this meeting and I apologize, but if memory serves me correctly, we're we're really close to online with where we were last year as well. I'm Correct, right. we're tracking pretty close. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and then oftentimes folks are most interested in the professional services and and the breakdown for that, it's our highest spending line item in the in the general fund. So I just included a little breakdown <clears throat> of how that money has been spent. And then let's see, I'll tell you the total professional services that we've spent is uh, 83,000. And so of that, 36% is the attorney. We know we've had some kind of... Uh, one-off issues that we normally so we normally wouldn't be that high for this early in the year and then our resident the auditor it uh the financial software that's Cassell planning which is um our city planning but also the comp plan that we're working on and the financial consultant do you have any questions on that financial the, i'm sorry the, the financial consultant is that a uh, a person you're paying a fee to manage money or uh, give advice in some other area? No, and actually I'll talk more about this on the next slide, but so that's Grand Peak. So we um, first partnered with them uh, to help with the budget model uh, and she worked on that. And then also uh, like ongoing financial consulting for me with questions that, that I might have. <clears throat> okay. um, and then now we're working on a different project, which I'll, the internal controls. And then, of course, she often does provide just any any questions that I have. Thanks. Okay, um, city attorney, there. Um, what is the percentage? Thirty-six uh, percent. So like that this? was uh, thirty thousand uh, dollars. I mean, last. I mean, last fiscal year. I, I don't have that information in front of me, but I can I can check into that for you. 
Yeah, I just want to know how much uh, increase you talk about there some project that I mean some something we didn't expect to spend, but we are spending it. Is it in this category? Yeah, I can um, I can answer that if it's okay with you, Nina. Yeah, please. Yeah, so there's two things, two areas primarily we've been tracking and reporting on in city council meetings on a monthly basis. One is the uh, referendum around the cadence for water billing, uh, which was not planned for, and I think we're running around $30,000-ish. So, And the other is the lawsuit or everything leading up to the lawsuit that's now in Tillamook County Court uh, having to do with the request to uh, get access to information on a confidential report, and that's in the Tillamook County Court system now. And I think, Nina, of around ten or 11000 and we know that bill is going to go up. We're not finished with that just yet. So those would be two categories of, of bills for, you know, when we budget for legal, you know, we plan for stuff. Layla plans for things that, you know, we know we'll have contacts to review and the regular business of the city. So that would be normally what we're seeing in that category. And so we're just tracking these other two things to understand uh, what the impact has been on budget. When you look at the entire size of the budget, it's not a it's not a huge percentage, but when it comes to legal fees and people are interested in that and, and have expressed some concern about that in the city, uh, these are the two things that are causing the number to be up. I don't know. And I don't know if you care to forecast at this point, Nina, where we'll be kind of by fiscal year end, but those are the two reasons the number is higher than usual. Fair enough, Nina? Yes, fair enough. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. And, and relating this and relating this to the first quarter budget report, is the first quarter professional services part of the administration total expenditures? Is that what the 281000 is? That's something totally different. Are you asking where this is reflected in that um, first yes. quarter budget report I said? Yes. So that would be under administration of materials and services. Materials and services. The $108,842 yep. is broken down according to your pie chart. No, sorry. This is just professional services. So for that uh, materials and services, that includes like building operations, stationery and supplies, computer equipment, um, planning or uh, travel and training, things like that. I see. So that we don't have a total for the first quarter professional services in your pie chart. No, sorry. This the the total for professional services is 83,972. Okay. And our total MS was 108. Got it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Any other questions on that? Okay. Um, so I'll move forward to uh, let's see. the internal controls project. So um, why are internal controls so important? I think we all kind of, you know, think about this and know, but internal controls are just a set of measures that help protect our resources ensure accuracy and comply with regulations. And in addition to preventing internal and external fraud, they also help with a lot of other things such as risk management, compliance, reporting, efficiency, communication, transparency, and cost savings. So we had, uh, with our financial consultant, we sort of had to sit down and decide what we were gonna prioritize, the financial policy or the work on internal controls. And we went with internal controls because we just felt that this was such an important um, place to start and to get that rolling. So we partnered with Grand Peaks, the financial consultant, to start on that process. And it'll be a three-phased approach. So uh, Grand Peaks will assess and document our current internal controls and offer a compre comprehensive framework for um, operational and process improvements uh, while ensuring a robust control environment. So each phase starts with a kickoff meeting that uh, defines the scope and timeline uh, with an estimated total project duration of 12 to 18 months, which can vary depending on their schedule and our schedule. So we're currently in phase one, 
So they have sent over questionnaires, detailed questionnaires mm -hmm. and uh, risk and control matrix for me. So for accounts receivable, cash disbursements, month and close payroll and procurement, I have to go through um, a really detailed process of answering a lot of questions and explaining how we do things now. She'll spend until about February of 2025 reviewing that and going through everything. And then she spends about six months from there uh, creating a detailed documentation. So procedures for all of those areas with flow charts and narratives that are based on the responses that I have given her, which is just the documentation of procedures is, is so important and so challenging for us to do in-house because we are so small and none of us really have enough time to document everything and have procedures like that. So it'll just be such a wonderful document that will live beyond all of us and, and put a lot of things in writing that, that should be. And then in September of 2025, we're estimating that time, uh, she'll come on site and do a walkthrough and do kind of a testing with staff on the procedures that she has developed. So we're really excited about it. It's a it's a huge project and a big undertaking, but it will go so far uh, to helping with all of those internal controls. And with the, the finding on the audit that we always get of a lack of segregation of duty, this will really help to mitigate that. Uh, Nina, if I could just say something really quickly. so. We have been, in our audit, we have been uh, nicked for lack of internal controls as long as I've been on the council. And the response from administration and from the uh, from the uh, CPA firm, well, that's typical. I mean, you're, it, it was okay. We're a, small, we're a small city. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. Uh, I, I just have to commend you for taking the responsibility to step up and solve this issue. It's uh, it's major, it's important, we can deal with it, and it will, I believe, uh, create even stronger confidence in the numbers we generate uh, based on internal controls. So this is, I hope everybody understands. This it's, is huge. A huge, it's huge. It's huge. Huge step forward. And it's, it's, it's above what we're required to do, but it is what a city that is proactive, looking at their finances, managing their finances well, needs to do. So thank you and congratulations. And it is just amazing. So I just want to make sure everybody realizes how big this is. So thank you, Nina, for taking and Actually, that I will say uh, with just the work that We've already started to do this audit was the first time she said that if we could mitigate payroll um, to where I'm not running it, basically, because I'm the one, you know, basically calculating my own paycheck, and which, of course, is managed. But she said payroll really is the only thing that prevents us from not having that segregation of duty. And I think definitely through this process, I, I, I believe that at the end of this, we'll be able to have that finding gone which is huge for a city of our size, like you said, because it's really just, it doesn't happen. So we're really excited. As well, you should. Uh, my take is, although our city is small, okay, and then the city hall staffing is small size, but the money we, we manage is not small. You take a look at it. Altogether, I see a million or more. Am I right or not? So, and then we receive revenue, and then the bandwidth cancellation, approval process, those need to be segregated. I do not agree with the comment with the auditor or others that um, is we can brush it off. This need to be uh, uh, um, install an internal control, and it need to get done. So I'm glad you're getting on it. I'm glad we are finally, you know, spend time resources on it. Uh, from my background, this has to be done, especially the bandwidth cancellation. I don't see personnel, um, the, the payroll is the most important. 
I think the bank reconciliation approval process is equally important. Absolutely. And and we do have a, a robust um, approval process for like bills for payment and, and those things. And I think, I don't necessarily think the auditors are trying to brush it under the rug, but I think that the biggest concern for small cities is, is being able to to fund and have enough work to have separate departments that that do the accounting and the payroll because it's just we're so small it's one person who does all of those functions um but anyway yes and i was also thinking i know you and joy also have a lot of experience with internal controls so i think as we move through this process i'll be reaching out and maybe picking your guys's brains on stuff sounds good i'm happy to Help yeah, out. I'm happy to help. If um you have questions, you know, Joy and I can help you out. That's yeah, I would, I would love for you to to be a part of that process. It is it's a huge a huge deal. Thank you. Yes. Do I have any other questions or comments on that? I think my only comment would be that I think it's really important for all of us to remember in this process we are going above and beyond what is required, and I think we need to be commended for doing that. It's the right thing to do, Kit. I, I absolutely agree with you, but it is above and beyond what we're required to do. That's all that I'll say. So. Okay. Um, and Leela sent a message. I don't know if she's back on, but her power went out, so she got kicked off. <laughs> I'm still here. I was just saying if my battery goes down, I have a battery backup on Wi-Fi. I'll try to get back in through um I'll try to get back in through my hotspot. So okay. but Nina's got this, so I'm just sitting in the background. <laughs> okay. Um, so no more questions there. Okay, perfect. So we'll move on to the interest allocation. Um so just a quick reminder, I've gone over this before, but I thought it would be important for folks to see. I know. If you saw on the financial report under uses of money and property is, is where that earned interest lives. And we're already for almost all the departments above what we budgeted. So that's because as you can see, this is the, so our, our earned interest is based off the money that we hold in our LGIP savings account, which currently sits at about uh, 9 million. So you can see in March of 2021, it was 0.6% and it's just skyrocketed to currently 5.15%. Uh, so we don't budget for that because it fluctuates. We have no control um, and no ability to really accurately forecast how much that might fluctuate. So we still budget uh, really conservatively and kind of close to what it used to be. But um, anyway, I just thought I'd show that to folks that this is kind of why it is so much more than we budgeted for. And so with that in this fiscal year um, and funds closing, and now we have the building fund and we were using a model um, that we hadn't created. And so we decided this year would be a good year to create a new interest allocation model that more accu accurately reflected the funds that should be earning interest. So. Like, for example, this year, the timber fund closed. Well, that had always accrued interest. And so um, I went through and created a model. The funds up top are the ones that are earning interest. And so in order to determine an amount, and this gets kind of boring and tedious, I apologize. Stay with me. Um, so we have to determine. So each month, uh, we use the previous month's activity. So it's we have to first find the true cash balance that we're working with. So we take the total cash balance minus the non-interest earning funds is the true cash balance that we're working with for this model. So then we take, we determine the fund balance for each of these interest earning funds. And that comes from the trial balance. We take the fund balance for each of those divided by the total cash balance that we determined first, and that gives us a percentage allocation for each fund. <clears throat> then I take that percentage and multiply it by the total earned interest, which gives me a balance or an amount for each one of those funds. So to show you what that looks like, um, 
So, and it's actually really exciting because with Cassell, I have the ability to pull this out into something called my Excel. So all I have to do every month now that I've built the model is just change the date and the earned interest and it populates all of the amounts for me. And it used to be kind of a tedious process. Um, so this has just been amazing so far. So um, these are all the funds that do not accrue interest, but do have a fund balance. This is our total cash allocation. So I uh, deduct all of these funds that don't earn interest to come up with cash allocated to interest funds. Then up here, I have all the funds that do accrue interest. And I'll put in the balance from the or the date from the previous month. So on this one, I was balancing um, for September. So I used August and it automatically pulls out the fund balance for all of those funds. Then I put in the earned interest for the month of September. Multiply it by the percentage that I got by taking each fund balance divided by the total. And it gives me an amount each month that will change based on the fund balance, which is how it should be. And I worked with the financial consultant uh, and she agrees on this method. So do you have any questions yet? I agree with this method. This is a good allocation. That's what you should do. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. It was quite tedious, but um, now that it's in there, it's just a super. Yeah, easy. once you set it up, you start. Um, it, it's just good. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, this will be included in the financial policy. That's where this will will live once we get there. Nina. <clears throat> yeah. I certainly agree with Kit. I uh, don't know. Don't have the same background as Kit, but I certainly agree with her that this is a, a good model, and I I don't question it at all. But I do anticipate. Uh, there could be questions out there like, well, we always hear that the transportation fund, for example, is weak, uh, needs more resources, uh, or some people might think the water fund needs more resources. What is the best argument for not just uh, picking a winner among our funds and giving all of the accrued interest to that uh, winner? I know, I know it's much more complicated than that, but is there an easy way to express that to members of the public uh, that you know, the the uh, underpinnings of this approach. Do you have any thoughts on that, Leila? Uh, thanks, Jerry. I mean, ultimately, it ends up being a policy decision, um, really. But this approach, what it does is, <clears throat> you know, each fund carries a balance. And since we earn interest on the total fund balances, right, it's all mushed into our savings account. Okay. This is sort of a best practice, equitable way of applying that interest to each of the funds based on the amount of funds that are in that savings account. So um, that's why we modeled it after this that way. Um, it was something that, again, is a best practice. Um, if there was an interest in doing something different, you, you could do that. But um, this is what we're recommending at this time. Okay. Is, is there a restriction uh, for uh, enterprise funds on how you uh, allocate the interest? I don't, I don't, well, I think I would be hard pressed to say that we would want to, we would want to allocate less than what the fund balance uh, share is. So I don't, <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know the answer to that question, um, but I would say that we would certainly not want to allocate less um, to any, really to any fund based on its current balance. So um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll look into that, but I, I think that it's best practice to allocate the percentage, you know, for whatever the water utility fund has an LGIP account, they should be getting an equitable amount of interest based on that, that fund balance. And this, as Nina mentioned, this fluctuates every month, right? So it's um, it's the most equitable way to allocate those funds based on how much resources are, are sitting in the savings account. Now, this method methodology is based on the balance, it's based on data is not subjective. That's why it's a more um, 
transparent and then um in a in a way that we can have a basic a work frame to um to explain how we uh, allocate the fund if we're saying that if there's a fund that is lack of money we need to give more this is that is another story that would be maybe fund transfer that you can explain in a document <clears throat> but this is should be an ongoing process you transfer it uh, you allocate the interest based on the balance based on the data instead of um, putting any subjective um, um, criteria into it. So that's why I support this methodology. Uh, I, I, see, I see you've got about a million dollars of uh, uh, balances that are not earning interest. Is there any way to get some of those balances earning interest? So like, for example, the allocation to municipal. So this is a fund that's basically a pass through. It's basically a trust fund for the municipal court department. So we take in court revenue, we hold it there, and then we disperse it to the city, the county, and then to ourselves. And by city, I mean Wheeler and Nahalem. So that definitely would not want to earn interest. Uh, performance bond guarantee, again, that's a pass through. That's money we take in. Uh, for a performance bond guarantee, and then we release it back. Uh, timber management, public safety, housing rehab, and building reserve all close this fiscal year and are transferred out. So those will have zero balance. So those wouldn't accrue. And then for the City Hall Expansion Fund, that's a capital improvement fund. And so we elected to not allocate interest to that fund. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, except the last fight in the city hall expansions, capital improvements. So you've elected not to, I mean, is the money, I mean, it's just a matter of putting the money in one account versus the other. And one of them pays 5% and the other one, somebody's, somebody's collecting the 5%. If we're not, then the bank is, or somebody's collecting it. I'm quite sure what the 5% is, but I can. Well, the 5% is is about average interest on in these accounts. That's, oh, that's yeah. What it's been so paying. because if we don't, if we, go ahead. Um, because the city hall expansion fund, as Nina mentioned, is a capital project fund, and we are getting debt service uh, based on a reimbursement basis. There's no funds sitting in that account really at any given time Hello? Um, because we basically are accounting Hello? for our funds that we're spending on that project through there, but the funds that we're receiving and transferring are coming into the, to the general fund. So that's why we elected not to. Now, if we had a taken out debt and gotten the full debt amount and put that into the city hall expansion fund, that might have been appropriate for us to then allocate the interest to that fund but that's not how the the debt is working. It's going through the general fund, and so that's why those those funds are getting allocated to the general fund and not through the the city hall expansion fund. Thanks for your explanation. Yeah, good question. Have any other questions on that? <clears throat> okay. Um, and then the last item is just the second quarter uh, budget committee work session preview. So that will be January 1st, 2025. Um, and that meeting will present a 2025 budget schedule adoption, which will include uh, all of the meetings for uh, adopting the budget. And then of course, the second quarter finance report, I'll discuss the audit a little more in depth. And then uh, it was just, kind of put my feelers out there to see if anyone on council or the budget committee had any suggestions of items uh, they would like to, to have discussed. And of course, there may be items added onto that as we get closer to prepping for the budget. It can be difficult to forecast this far out, but that's a rough guess. And I guess... With that, that's all I have. 
I'd like to say something before we wrap up and, and Jim closes us out. I, I just, um, it's a it's a cousin of a comment to what uh, Linda and, and some of you were saying earlier. So the work that we're doing with the consultant uh, that we've discussed a little bit here on internal controls, that all, you know, that exists in and of itself and that's a good thing. And I'm, I'm was glad to get the different perspectives and um, commitment from the budget committee members that that's an important thing to do. And for those of you who haven't been on the budget committee as long, um, what to me it looks like is just yet another step in the ladder we're, we're going up. So, you know, rather than trying to tackle that work two years ago, you know, it just, it wasn't time and more fundamental work needed to be done. So Nina and Layla and crew have just been building the fundamentals every single year. Um, and this to me just represents the, the continued progress on some of the very important back of house operations that most people outside of the city in this committee don't ever see um, and that they rely upon to be really well managed uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, not just in terms of how we budget and plan for things, but how every single financial transaction that comes through our city hall and to uh, Kit's point, it's a considerable amount of money when you look at it, that it's handled well and we've got good controls. The other thing I'm really pleased about for that work will be just the, the stability it gives you in any organization to have something really well documented. It helps with staff planning, it helps with staff development, it helps with staff transition. And all those things, again, are kind of the higher order things we can work on now because so many good fundamental improvements have been put in place over the last couple of years. So I commend, um, I commend staff and it's all staff, Nina, Nina represents this and is certainly, you know, queen of the audit by the time we get to that time of year, but it requires every single staff member to do their work and do their job and uh, follow the procedures carefully. And, and all of that then ends up getting us a good result like we did this year. And it's a real confidence builder to me personally. And I think I'm sure I could speak for the committee. It was a confidence builder for the committee and then the community. So I want to thank you all for that work. Thank you. And I turn it back to you, Chair Dopp. With that being said, uh, are there any final comments for anybody in attendance uh, as far as the uh, what we've covered for the uh, uh, budget review? I, uh, I again want to say this process of being able to follow the budget and get an update as we go through the year is so much nicer than, than all of a sudden diving into it at the end of the year. So I commend the entire staff for, uh, for taking this on and doing it. It's, it's a, it's a lot of work. I, I understand it is. Um, and being confident enough to sit there and be able to field our questions from, from dummies that really don't know is, uh, is appreciated. So uh, again, my compliments um, and again, any other comments from anybody else before? Hearing none, I uh, now would uh, at 1041 adjourn the meeting of the uh, budget committee. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Nina. Great work. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Good, good Thank job. Great work. Thank Great you. Work. Bye. Thanks a lot.